All right, so we're still continuing with the classification of the state of a disparate time map of chain. Let us um, take the next definition known as transient state. So a state I of a Markov chain is said to be transient or non-recurrent if and only if starting from state I, eventual return to this state is not certain. In other words, a state is said to be transient if any time that the Markov chain leave that state, the likelihood of returning to that state in the future is uncertain, okay? So for instance, in figure one, class one, two, and three are transient states, okay? So let's take a look at this figure. So we have four classes. This is one class, the second class, the third class, and the fourth class, okay? We know from our previous tutorial that this is going to be a recurrent state. So we want to find the opposite of it, which is a transient state. So this class is going to be transient because once we move out from this class, there's no way we can return to this class. So therefore the state becomes transient. The same applies to the second class, which is made up of state three and state four. Once we move out from this class, either through state three or through state four, there's no way we can return to this class. So this state also wow. becomes transient, okay? The same applies to class three, which is made up of state five. Once we move out from this class, there's no way we can return to state five again. So this also becomes um, transient, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this remark. If a state of a Markov chain is transient, then it does not have a limiting distribution, okay? So once you discover that your Markov chain is transient, then the limiting probabilities will not exist, okay? All right, so to the next um, definition or concept, we have periodic and aperiodic. So what is, a, what is a periodic state? A state I is said to be periodic if the period at that state is greater than one, where the period of the state is defined as the greatest common divisor of the times at which return is possible, which is defined in equation three. So periodic state, periodic, um, state also means that the return to the state is limited only to regularly repeating times, okay? Now, what is um, a periodic state? A state I is said to be a periodic if the period at that state is one, where the period of the state is defined as the greatest common divisor of the times at which return is possible as defined in equation four, okay? So um, in other words, we can say a, um, a periodic state implies that the return to the state is not limited only to regularly repeating times, okay? So let's take an example. So consider the map of chain in figure one, it can be observed that we can go from state six to state six in two steps and in three steps, okay? So therefore the period at state six is going to be one, which will make it to be a product, okay? So let's take a look at figure one. Um, let's take a look at the number of steps that we are going to return to state six again. So we can move one and two, okay? Or we can move one, two, and three, okay? And this may continue. We can move one, two, three, four, five, six in that order. Or we can move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So you realize that um, the number of times that you're going to return to state six is going to be two, three, four, five, six, seven in that order. So the greatest common device that we're going to observe here is going to be one. So therefore the period at state six is going to be what? A periodic, okay? All right, so let's take another example. We want to determine whether the model whose transition graph is shown in figure three is a periodic, okay? So let's take a look at this figure. All right, so um, let's start, let's pick one of, one, one of the states. So let's, let's assume we are going to pick state zero. So we are going to observe the number of times that we are going to return to state zero, okay? So let's start, we have one, we have two, okay? So we have one and two. We can also move one, and two, three, and four, okay? So we have four. We can also move one, two, three, and four again, okay? Now let's move in this direction. We can also move one, two, okay? We can also go one, two, three, and four, okay? 
Now, if you observe this transition diagram carefully, you observe that the period at any state is going to be two since the times at which the state could be revisited are multiples of two, okay? So this follows that all states in this model will have a period of two. So therefore the Markov chain is not a periodic, but what periodic, okay? All right. So let's take a look at this remark. For an irreducible Markov chain with one step transition probability matrix, if there is at least one positive element on the diagonal of the transition probability matrix, then the Markov chain is a product, okay? So this, uh, this is a very nice or important remark that you have to take note of. If maybe you are given a Markov chain and you are able to get the transition probability matrix, you just have to um, observe if there's at least one positive element on the diagonal. Once you're able to discover that, then it tells you that the Markov chain is going to be what? A product, okay? All right. So now to the next um, concept or definition known as egodic Markov chains. So an aperiodic state, which is positive recurrent, is going to be what? An egodic state. So we already know what aperiodic means, and we also know what positive recurrence means from our previous tutorial, okay? A recurrent state um, is set with positive recurrent if the return to the state is certain and the expected number of times is going to be finite. So an aperiodic state, which is positive recurrent, is going to be what? An egodic state. In other words, all states of a finite, aperiodic, and irreducible Markov chain are egodic, okay? So we already know a periodic, we already know what an irreducible Markov chain means. So once you have this three process, a finite, a periodic, and irreducible Markov chain, then it means that you're going to have an ergodic Markov chain, okay? Now, a chain consisting of ergodic states is called an ergodic Markov chain, okay? So once we have a state that are ergodic, it means that a Markov chain is also going to be what? An ergodic chain, all right. So let's take a look at this remark. If a Markov chain is ergodic, then the limiting distribution, right, will always exist and it is going to be genetic. And the mean return time to state J can be obtained using this expression, okay? So um, the ergodicity of a Markov chain is actually important for the reason being that it has the merit of providing the limiting distribution for Markov chain, okay? So once you um, identify a Markov chain to be ergodic, then it means that there's going to be um, a unique limiting distribution, and you can also obtain the mean return time using this expression, okay? So let's pay attention to this remark. Now let's take a look at this theorem. Let this process be an ergodic Markov chain with state space, which is finite. If the Markov chain is doubly stochastic, and I think we know what doubly stochastic means from our previous tutorial. So this is where the transition probability matrix, aside the fact that the rows are summing up to one, the columns also do sum to one, okay? So if the Markov chain is doubly stochastic, then the limiting probabilities of the state exist and are given by the equation below, okay? So um, let's pay close attention to this, to this term. Let's um, take an example regarding this term. We want to determine the limiting um, probabilities for the one step transition probability matrix um, defined below. So here we have three states, one, two, three. So we want to find the limiting probabilities for this one step transition probability matrix. How do we do this? Let's take a look at the solution. So you can observe that since the row and column entries of this transition probability matrix is summing up to one, we are going to have a doubly stochastic matrix because once you sum the rows, it's going to give you one, and once you sum the columns, you're also going to obtain one. So this becomes a doubly stochastic matrix, okay? So in order to determine the limiting distribution for probabilities, we have to first show that the Markov chain is iconic, okay? We, we already know that the Markov chain is finite, so we have to show that the Markov chain is irreducible and also it is a periodic, okay? So we want to show that the Markov chain is 
irreducible. We know that the transition probabilities for these two are greater than zero, and therefore these two states will communicate. Also, because these two transition probabilities are greater than zero, it follows that state one and state three communicate, okay? And also, because these two transition probabilities are greater than zero, it follows that state two and state three also communicate, okay? Now, since every state of the Markov chain can be reached from each, from every other state, it follows that the Markov chain is going to be what? Irreducible, all right? So now we want to show that the Markov chain is going to be um, a periodic, okay? So since there's at least one positive element on the diagonal of the transition probability matrix, it follows that the Markov chain is also going to be what? A periodic, okay? So now since the Markov chain is an ergodic Markov chain, okay, it follows that the limiting probabilities of the state exist and can be obtained using this expression from the theorem, okay? So we, we, we know that once the um, transition probability matrix is doubly stochastic, we can actually find the limiting probabilities which can be obtained using this, okay? And we have already shown that this is also going to be right and ergodic. Okay, we have already shown that. So to obtain the limiting probabilities using the theorem, we can have it expressed in this form. So this is going to be one divided by the number of states. Okay, so the limiting probability at state one is going to be one divided by three. And at state two also be one divided by three. And at state three also be one divided by three, okay? All right. So um, this will bring us to the end for this session. Um, this will be a trial question. I will leave the solution in the description of this video so you can check it out. Please, if you found value in today's tutorial video, don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And thank you for watching.